What's going on fish nerds? We are back and I've got a cool little project that I'm going to work on today. I've got a nano tank that I'm going to be scaping setting up so that I can take it to work and have a tank on my desk. Uh, but before we get into that, I just want to show you guys this real quick. You remember all the trouble with the algae we had in here and yes, there is still algae in here. You can see some on the Pinnatophyta here. There's still some here. Uh, around the uh, dwarf hair grass and I'm actually starting to get a little more of this black beard algae but I did add a super red bristle nose in here uh, not long after I added the shrimp and speaking of the shrimp look how big this dude is he's put on a lot of size all of them have put on a lot of size since I added them to this tank and uh, between them and the Pleco, they have done a number on the algae. This tank is looking a lot better. Uh, plants are doing good with a couple of exceptions. The Pinnatophyte is doing awesome. The uh, Stargrass, though, not doing too hot. I've got a couple little sprigs of it, but not too good. The uh, Dwarf Aquarium Lily, it died. But I do have another one up here to replace it that... Uh, Anubius there is going to go in the uh, tank we're about to scape. There's another big old mono shrimp. These guys have easily doubled to tripled in size since I added them to the tank just what, a month, month and a half ago, something like that. So they, they've exploded in size. And you can see there's a molt back there. There's a couple pieces of molt all throughout the tank a little bit. Because, I mean, they just keep eating and they keep molting. But I want to show you guys this. Here we've got 18 cardinal tetras. Now, yes, I'm about to put them in this tank, but no, this is not their permanent home. They are not going to stay here forever. I'm going to quarantine them in this tank since with the exception of the bristle nose and the amano shrimp, there's nothing else in this tank. So I'm going to use this tank to grow them out in, get them a little bit bigger take them through the quarantine process and then they're actually going to go in the corner tank with uh, Gil the angelfish so until they're big enough I don't want to I mean they're small enough right now that I'd be worried that he might try to eat them so I'm gonna grow them out get them a little bigger around full size before I add them into his tank so that's why they're over here for now and uh, I'm gonna add this dwarf aquarium lily and uh, then we're going to go into the other room and we're going to work on this desk tank. So these guys are here. They're going to get settled in here for a little while. And they're looking pretty good. But uh, I apologize. I forgot to turn on the camera when I put the aquarium lily back there. But I think it looks really good too. I think that's going to pop really nice in that corner. I'm not sure what I'm going to do about the uh, the star grass. I'm, I may replace it with something else. I may try to fill that back up with star grass but right now we just got a big bare spot in the middle but yeah that's what's going on here but now as promised let's go do that desktop tank all right so this is the tank we're working with this is a fluval spec i believe it's two and a half gallons uh, this was given to me used and uh, it had the gravel and this little crypt in here already when she gave it to me and uh, if you don't know the design on these, it's just a simple overflow to the back chamber where we've got a big sponge filter there. It goes all the way through that sponge, comes out the bottom on the other side of this. That's where the pump is. It pumps it back up into the tank. And uh, this thing is directional. You can move that around. I like pointing it this way just because it gives it a little bit of surface agitation there. 
and uh, kind of gives it a nice flow through the tank. So this is what we're working with. So it's not a big tank. It's not going to be suitable for like a bunch of fish or big fish or anything like that. But that's not what I plan on doing anyway. This is just a little small something to have on my desk at work. And uh, we've got a couple pieces of small dragon stone and I've got an Anubias that I'm going to put in here. And we'll keep the crypt in there too. Uh, but may as well go ahead and get started scaping this dude out. And just like that, we're done. Easy peasy. Uh, this is probably the quickest, easiest scape I have ever done. Uh, just took a few minutes. But I really like how it turned out. I wasn't going for fancy. I wasn't going for over the top. It's not like there's a lot of room to work with anyway. I was just kind of going for minimalist, uh, just quick, simple, easy, but elegant. I wanted it to be pretty. I wanted it to look good. But uh, I also want it to be super low maintenance, not too complex, not too much to worry about. Because again, this is going to be at work. This is going to be on my desk. I'm not going to be able to spend a lot of time taking care of this thing. So just a couple of plants. And you can see I took the crypt and I split it up into three different parts there. So hopefully it'll, these two will take root and kind of spread around in here and get the front looking really nice. Got the Anubias. I just got it wedged in between the two pieces of dragon stone. Uh, I think they look really good, just angled the way they are. This one kind of curves around to meet this one really sharp. So, yeah, I mean, it's quick, it's simple, it's easy, but it looks nice. And it's definitely a lot, it's, it's going to be the best looking thing on my desk at work. I guarantee you that, except for the pictures of my wife. So, I'm just saying, for a few minutes to put this thing together, a few bucks on Dragonstone and plants, not a bad deal at all. And I'll say thank you to my friend Sharon who gave me this tank. Uh, this wasn't a new tank. I got this used from her. This is one of the several tanks that she gave me. So thank you very much, Sharon, uh, for that. And uh, now we got to get this thing stocked. Now, there's a couple things to note here. One, I have no heater in this tank. Two, this tank isn't big enough to support a whole lot of livestock. So what I'm going for here is something that can survive room temperature in an office space and uh, doesn't need a whole lot of water volume. So that pretty much narrows it down to one of my favorite things to keep in an aquarium, freshwater shrimp. We're going to put some neocaridina in here. Uh, so I'm going to go and I'm going to catch those. I've got thousands of uh, shrimp out in the fish room. So I'm just going to get a bag of those, get a few of them in here. Uh, I'm not going to over, I'm not going to put a lot of them in here, just a few and uh, I'll let them breed, you know, and let them fill it up themselves. So there's no need to put a bunch of them in here, but yeah, I'm going to go catch some shrimp and uh, we'll get this tank stocked. And these are our shrimp that are going to be going in this tank. There is a temperature difference between the uh, fish room and this tank. So I just got them floating here for a little while, get them acclimated. But these are actually, culls that I have pulled uh, from my Fantasy Blue Dream tank. I've had the Fantasy Blue Dreams for a year and a half and they actually breed surprisingly true but uh, over the course of a year and a half you will have some culls uh, and I don't like to 
kill shrimp or I, it, even feeding to like turtles and stuff like that. I could do that, but I mean, these are still really pretty shrimp, so why do that? So uh, I just end up pulling them out and put them in a different tank uh, and just let them breed and I don't worry about the, the quality or anything like that. I just pull them out of my breeding tanks so that the, my breeding tanks remain true. But you can see these guys like, uh, there's some red around her head and there's a little bit of red on the saddle there. One of them uh, right here has got a little bit of green around the head. That kind of thing. There's a male in here. He's just not dark enough for me, so I pulled him. You know, that kind of thing. Like I said, they do breed extremely true, but over the course of a year and a half, you're going to have some coals. So, may as well take them out and put them in a separate tank like this one, where you can still enjoy them. And honestly, I think it's cool looking to have that blue shrimp with a red or like a rusty color saddle like that. I think that's actually really cool looking, but uh, I can't sell that as a blue dream shrimp. So I pull it out of the breeding tank, but may as well keep it because it's super cool. But I'm gonna let these guys float for a little while longer and uh, we'll turn them loose. All right, these guys are settling in and I threw a little bit of Shrimp King Complete in there for them to munch on. And uh, if you want some Shrimp King Complete, you can actually get that at flipaquatics.com. He carries it. And speaking of shrimp and flipaquatics.com, I've got an exciting announcement for you guys. This channel, The Fish Nerd, is now officially sponsored by Flip Aquatics. And now you guys know I have been buddies with Rob for a long time now. Uh, he's not just a business partner in this. He is my friend. Uh, his company is one I believe in. I believe in him. I support what he's doing anyway. So it's, it's not like I'm deciding to support him because he offered to sponsor the channel. I am supporting Rob because I support him. I like him as a person. I believe in what he's doing. He's a great guy. And uh, I'm excited to have him uh, partner, partner up with us here and uh, sponsoring the channel and looking forward to some awesome stuff to come. So huge, huge, huge shout out to Flip Aquatics. Uh, and those of you that aren't familiar, which I can't imagine how you're not already familiar with Flip Aquatics, but uh, they are a premier online seller of freshwater shrimp, uh, Neocaridina and Caridina. Uh, they sell shrimp foods, some fish foods. And if I'm not mistaken, if I, if everything went as planned, he actually has a lot of nano fish in quarantine right about now uh, to be going up on the website soon. So he's doing nano fish now. He's also doing live plants and uh, just an awesome website that he actually quarantines all of his shrimp for at least 30 days before he sells them. I don't know of any other online shrimp seller that does that. Uh, there may be some, but I don't know about them. But Rob quarantines everything he sells, fish and shrimp, uh, before he will send anything out. So that's top notch and he's just a top notch guy and uh, really, really excited to be working with them. And if you guys have been watching me for very long, you know that all the shrimp I have, I originally got from Rob. I've never bought shrimp from anyone else. And uh, every time it's been a great experience. The Fantasy Blue Dreams, not these, not these are my culls from you know over a year and a half, just a few have popped up. But uh, the Fantasy Blue Dreams out in the fish room, I got from him my cherry shrimp. I got from Rob and those have bred into probably the thousands and also the Amano shrimp that we got just a few weeks ago and showed here on the channel. Those came from Rob as well. But anyway, back to this tank. Uh, unfortunately, this is the last time you guys are going to see this tank uh, because after this, I'm going to be taking it to work. Uh, so I'm not allowed to film at work. So I won't be able to do any more videos of this tank, but I wanted to at least let you guys see me set it up. So that's why I went ahead and set it up here at the house before I take it to work and set it back up there uh, so that you could get, so that you guys could uh, see what it looks like and you know at least share it with you guys before I take it away. And uh, yes, I do realize, you know, a little sidebar, I realize that these uh, gratings up here uh, for the overflow into the filter are big enough that the shrimp could get in there. But 
worst case scenario they just end up on top of that sponge and graze around on there and then come back through it's not like they're going to get sucked up into the pump or anything like that so everything's good there just in case anybody was worried about that all right guys so that's what i've got for you today let me know what you think of this tank in the comments below if you like this video give it a thumbs up if you want to see more videos like this make sure you subscribe you guys are awesome god bless you fish nerds i'll see you next time